Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to go over Fenty Beauty's new skincare line. There are three products that have been released or actually at this point they haven't been released yet but they will be released soon and I'm going to go over the ingredients with you to let you know if you should actually spend your money on these or not. So if this is interesting to you, if you are eyeing or anticipating the Fenty skincare line but want to know if it's actually worth it then stay tuned. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel and hitting that red subscribe button. You can also follow Laura Beauty over on Instagram and if you haven't seen my latest video I'm gonna link that in the upper right hand corner for you to check out. All right let's take a look at the ingredients in Fenty Beauty's new skincare line. All right so this is an ingredients based review that means I don't have the products actually here to tell you this is how they feel this is how they sit on the skin. I am looking at the ingredients because if you're buying skincare you should always 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 base your purchasing decision unless you just want to spend money to support the person behind the brand or whatnot or if you like the packaging but aside from that if you're looking for effective skincare you shouldn't be relying on what the company claims is happening with the skincare or what's good about the skincare you should actually look at the ingredients because that what is what controls what's actually in the product and those ingredients are what's going to interact with your skin and hopefully benefit your skin but sometimes damages your skin and that's why we want to look at the ingredients first so this line launches july 31st i'll put a link in the description box to where you can find it if you end up wanting to try some of these out and it will be available also through sephora in addition to fenty beauty's website if you do shop on either place make sure you sign up for rakuten first so that you can get cash back on your order i think at fenty it's two percent um sometimes they have higher percentages but i think the baseline is two percent and in sephora it ranges from like five percent to eight percent depending on the day so product number one is going to be the total cleanser remove it all cleanser this is going to cost 25 dollars, and you'll get 4.9 fluid ounces of product so a decent price point for the amount of product you're getting and the line is cruelty free clean we know that doesn't really mean anything and vegan so it says that this is a two-in-one makeup remover slash cleanser so that it's supposed to be effective enough to remove your makeup but also gentle enough to not be stripping or drying. Once again I'm not going to speak to how effective it actually is at removing my makeup because I haven't tried it but I do want to look at the ingredients to see if those claims would be supported by what's actually in the cleanser. Now the second ingredient is the cleansing agent and that is sodium cocal glycinate. And true to claims, this ingredient is a not only cleansing agent, but it has skin softening properties. It is a more mild cleansing agent and is known to be non-drying. So that's great. That is true to the company's claims that this will help remove dirt and oil and be a cleanser, but without stripping your skin. Similarly, the third ingredient, which is sodium cocoamphoacetate, no idea if that's how you actually pronounce it. This is also a cleansing agent but is also more mild. The next ingredient which is cocomidopropyl betaine is also a cleansing agent and helps to boost the lather of the product. It is extremely mild and usually too mild on its own to effectively cleanse which is why it's used as a secondary cleansing agent. On top of that they've included some glycerin that will help to hydrate the skin and you have several nice fruit or plant-based extracts including but not not limited to the Camellia sinensis leaf extract and Ginkgo biloba. So overall this looks really promising. My only knock on this product is the fact that they have included perfume or fragrance but it is way at the end of the ingredients list and this is a cleansing product meaning that it doesn't stay in contact with your skin very long. With a skincare product like a moisturizer that sits on your skin for hours at a time or even just minutes at a time you do not want to have a product that has fragrance in it. Fragrance is not a good skincare component even if you don't think it's irritating your skin. Fragrance can either immediately irritate your skin or poses a risk of irritation for the skin and will always pose a risk of causing an allergic reaction in your skin. So even if you may not have an allergic reaction to it today, you could have an allergic reaction to the fragrance two days down the road, five months down the road, a year down the road. But overall, given the reasonable price point, the good cleansing agents that are non-stripping and tend to be non-drying, and the fact that the fragrance that is included is way at the end of the ingredients list and it's a cleanse off product anyway, I would absolutely support trying out this 
cleansing product. The how-to section for the cleanser also says that you just twist and squeeze. So that means that the cap isn't something that you have to fiddle with and fully remove um, or even flip open. You just twist it and the product comes out, which I think is super convenient and a great idea for the packaging. The second product in the line is the Fat Water Pore Refining Toner Serum. This retails for $28 and you get five fluid ounces of product. Again, a very reasonable price point. And I feel like fat water is a really nice descriptor because if you look at the pictures, you can kind of tell that this is not a straight water-like toner, but it's also not thick enough to be like a moisturizer. It looks like a hybrid in between a toner or a gel type of product. If you're familiar with some essences or slightly more gel-like or snail or mucus-like, I know that sounds really gross, but just in terms of the thickness of the product, more mucus-like uh, essences from Korean beauty brands, that is exactly what this looks like. Similar the cleanser this product comes with a twist cap so once again it sounds like you don't need to fully remove the cap in order to dump out the product which is great i will say that the packaging is clear so just store it somewhere that's not in a direct sunlight try to store it in somewhere that is dark and away from sun exposure the claim for this product is that it instantly refines the look of pores a mm, little bit doubtful about that claim reduces the look of dark spots and even skin tone and fights shine without stripping the skin. So the second ingredient in here is witch hazel water, which is a little bit of a concern when you have so much witch hazel. I mean, a majority of the product is going to be witch hazel based. That definitely has the potential to strip the skin and dry out the skin, which goes directly counter to the claim in the product details that says that it doesn't strip the skin. Now, there are good skincare ingredients standout ones in this product. For example, the niacinamide, which is great for the skin. That's vitamin B3. It can have a lot of skin restoring and anti-damage properties and is an antioxidant for the skin. The sixth ingredient after the ferment filtrate ingredient causes me concern also. It looks like this is some sort of myrtle leaf extract, which can be fragrant and act as an astringent. So again, something that is not only stripping for the skin, but it's potentially fragrant and irritating. So that also raises concern for me. Once again, there are good fruit and plant-based extracts in here. For example, the cactus flower extract, fig fruit extract, again, ginkgo biloba is included, and you have hydrators like glycerin. But the fact that towards the beginning of the ingredients list, you have that fragrant myrtle extract and the fact that they've added further perfume and fragrance at the end of the ingredients list makes me not be in support of this particular product. When you add on top of that the fact that it does seem pretty astringent despite the claim that it's not supposed to be stripping, when you're stripping the skin and drying it out and then also adding fragrance to further potentially irritate it, it's just not a good combination. I think you'll find much better options that are not fragrant in Korean beauty skincare that have that more more uh, fat water type of texture and can serve as an essence for the skin. Third and last up in the line is the Hydra Visor Invisible Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Sunscreen. This retails for $35 and you get 1.75 ounces. That price point for Fenty seems pretty reasonable. What I also really like about this product is that it comes in an opaque um, pump dispenser type of packaging that you apparently can also refill. So you keep the outside bottle, but you can replace the inner tube that holds the product which is great, much more environmentally friendly, totally support that. For the claims, it says it gives you light as air hydration, invisible sun protection, defends and brightens the skin while reducing the look of pores. It says it does not contain oxybenzone or octanoxate. I know that a lot of sunscreen companies are talking about being reef safe or coral reef safe and some ingredients that we used to think are really damaging to the coral reefs. I think that there are more recent studies that sort of um, 
mitigate that or make us question how dangerous the ingredient actually is. But I'm going to leave that aside because the bottom line is that when you look at the active ingredients, it includes good, effective, active ingredients that especially combined with each other give you broad spectrum protection. So this is an avobenzone based sunscreen with the supportive ingredients of homosalate and octosalate. Nevertheless, you do want to be a little bit careful with avobenzone based sunscreens. You want to make sure that you're really applying it every two to three hours and and even more frequently if you're out in the sun because avobenzone is notorious for breaking down pretty quickly in sunlight. In terms of the non-sunscreen ingredients, we start out with a good amount of glycerin in this product and safflower to nourish the skin. You also have in here, again, niacinamide, which is great. The cornstarch will help give you a more mattifying effect. They've also included in here hyaluronic acid, which is nice to help hydrate the skin. In addition to sodium hyaluronate, which is also a very effective way to nourish and hydrate the skin, you have good plant extracts, for example, the watermelon seed extract, and we also see aloe leaf juice. But unfortunately, we again see the addition of fragrance in this product. Not only is fragrance listed toward the end of the ingredient list, but in addition to that, they've added fragrant ingredients, things that are not actually listed as fragrance, but themselves are fragrant. So for example, toward the very end, we have things like limonene and lanolol. So while I do absolutely commend and support this brand for A, bringing out a sun care product, because that is so important in your skincare routine. Um, and I also appreciate that the SPF is at a level of 30, which is the very minimum amount of SPF you want in a face product that you're applying. So even if you're staying inside, mostly having minimal time outside, you want a minimum of SPF 30 and something greater if you're going to have any significant time outside. But those good qualities are disrupted by the fact that they have added several different fragrant components, again, exposing your skin to irritation and to an allergic reaction. The fragrant ingredients are toward the end of the ingredients list, so at least they are not highly prevalent in the product, but there's definitely more than one of them. So it's not an insignificant amount of fragrance in here. I can't really say that this has a full stamp of approval. You can absolutely get a cosmetically elegant uh, SPF based moisturizers out on the market, even at the drugstore for much cheaper and that have no fragrant components in them. So there are my thoughts about the new Fenty Skin line. I think that this would be such a perfect perfect showing of new skincare from Fenty if they had just removed the fragrance. Just made that one little change to their products would increase the quality of it so, so much. But brands, because they are money-based and consumers still nowadays, unfortunately, associate something that smells nice and pleasant with something that they want to buy, even though it's not good for them, that means brands will continue to include them in skincare until consumers make a strong showing that says we don't want these things in our skincare. Perfume is not skincare. So until that really happens to an even greater degree, it is happening now. People are becoming more aware, which is great, but until it becomes even more prevalent, brands are just going to keep doing this. I am excited to see what other things they bring out in the line. Fingers crossed that they decide to not add fragrance to those upcoming products, whatever they may be. But at the end of the day, uh, I think that the cleanser is probably your best bet. And the other ones, you just have so many other better options out there that are at an even more affordable price point. I will say on a note that has nothing to do with ingredients, I really like the packaging for these products. I love the color. I love the simplicity. They're elegant. I'm very visually attracted to the packaging. So that's great too. All right, there is your ingredients rundown for Fenty Skin. I hope that this was helpful to you and that you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for taking the time to watch as always. I'll see you in the next video.